Hey guys, well it is time to talk a little bit about more forges. Uh, last video we put up of course was forges 101, different types of forges. Uh, and we're going to go through all of these uh, pretty much in detail. And so for most of you guys just starting out, unless you have a good bit of money in the bank or you're precluded from having a solid fuel forge, uh, like living in the burbs and you've just got to have a gas furnace, uh, you're going to be going with solid fuel. And if you're a reenactor or you're wanting to do it the historical way, solid fuel is the way that you're going to go. But uh, there is a stunning amount of... Uh, that you really need to know about solid fuels because a lot of people when they hear well, you can run a forge off charcoal they run down to the store and grab a bag of Kingsford well this is kind of a problem because Kingsford is not what we in the trade refer to as charcoal so don't sweat it I'm gonna get you taken care of but we're gonna start off right here what is charcoal now there's some real nuances here about the terminology okay so understand that when you say charcoal and coal, we're actually referring to two very different things. Not to be confused when somebody on the offhand says there were coals in the fire. So we got to really kind of pick through this. Charcoal is wood that has experienced something that we know as incomplete combustion. So basically what happens when you make charcoal, charcoal is, is wood that has been burned down in a anaerobic environment, meaning that it's oxygen starved. And what happens is that when you starve it for oxygen, the wood can't burn into ash. It actually carburizes, turns into carbon. And what it ends up making is something that looks like this. Now I'm gonna give you a close up. Uh, you can see that this looks like a burnt piece of wood. And this is charcoal. It's very light. It's much lighter than the original wood that it was made from. And this stuff is the original fuel of the blacksmith. Now, if you go to a place like Lowe's or Home Depot, or you go to someplace grilling, uh, you know that lump charcoal is different from what Kingsford is, or what is known as a briquette, which we'll get to in a minute. Lump charcoal was the first fuel of the blacksmith. In fact, this stuff is the reason that England is no longer a forested country. Remember Sherwood Forest, you know, Robin Hood and pew pew, all that kind of good stuff? Well, it got wiped out by the charcoal industry. With the Industrial Revolution of England, what was happening is all these mills that were uh, going off steam power were burning this stuff right here. And, this were, and the great thing about charcoal is this stuff gets hot. I mean, you can easily forge weld with it. In fact, this is how we originally got steel. Uh, coal mined out of the ground did not come into later. So what was happening is industry was starting to suck up more and more of this stuff, and entire forests were laid to waste just to manufacture lump charcoal. So if you guys work with a green egg or you grill out, you're familiar with this stuff. So for right now, just make sure that you, you make a distinction between Kingsford briquettes and real lump charcoal. This is the stuff that you want. Now, this is the good stuff. So it's wood that is with incomplete combustion, turns into lump charcoal, and this is the good stuff. Now, Kingsford briquettes and several other brands, I don't mean to pick on Kingsford, whereas this stuff is great for grilling out in the backyard because it's so consistent. This stuff is actually sawdust that's been packed into a pellet. So sawdust is blown through a flame, is carburized, and then just like on a peel press, it is punched into this little nugget. Um, now I'm going to tell you, if you've been out there using this stuff and you say, man, it just don't do a great job, understand you're joining the ranks and legions of people that said, oh, we can burn charcoal and put this in your fire. I was one of them. The first solid fuel forge that I put together I had a big bag of Kingsford, but this stuff is not going to get you very far. Uh, there's no air pockets to get in here, so it's not going to get very hot. It's not designed to get very hot. It's designed to burn low and slow, which is what you want for cooking charcoal. So the way it's made, though, is sawdust is blown through a flame, pressed and cooked, and it turns into a Kingsford briquette, which for foraging purposes is equivalent to dookie butter. You do not want this stuff for forging at all. Trust me, not going to help. You're just going to be wasting your hot dogs and your meats. Now, moving along, the first environmental laws that were ever put on the books were in England. 
And what was happening is there was so much of the forest being devastated that they put laws on the, on the actual books that said you can no longer use lump charcoal to power your industry. You had to use something that was mined out of the ground that we know as coal. Now coal, oops, I dropped one, let me get it. Coal basically looks like black little rocks right here. And these come in a variety of flavors. You got, uh, you got chicken, ranch, beef jerky, all that kind of good stuff. So you also have anthracite and bituminous, which are your two main types of coal. Anthracite is normally a hard coal, bituminous is a soft coal, if I remember correctly. And it, it, there's an odd thing because over the years, my 20 years doing blacksmithing, when I first got into this, uh, bituminous coal was what was recommended for blacksmiths. Uh, every source, every blacksmith I'd ever talked to, bituminous was the stuff. I had access to anthracite, uh, which was brought into our local power dam. And, uh, you know, I say, well, I'm not using the good stuff. The stuff I had was very smoky, high sulfur content. It was just not a good quality coal. Uh, but now I hear more and more Smiths, even some older, uh, very nozzle people, say that anthracite is the way to go. So there's a bit of a debate there, so I'm not even going to get into that, but what I'm going to say, if you have access to coal of any type, uh, you're doing good. If you're beginning, if it will burn, this stuff is, is, is going to be better than most of the things you can get. It is certainly going to be more inexpensive if it's available in your area. So we're going to leave that debate all the way to the side. We're going to put that over there with uh, quenching with magnetic north, packing a knife edge, and all those other things that everybody loves me to talk about on YouTube videos, right? So what happens with coal, though, is coal is mined out of the ground. Uh, it is then burned in a forge or it is cooked industrially. And something happens called driving off the volatiles. Now, basically this process of incomplete combustion, another name for it or, or this other process, is called driving off the volatile compounds. And when you do this, you basically burn out all the junk and you're left with a very pure fuel. So you burn a piece of wood, uh, you end up with a very pure form of charcoal. You burn down coal and you end up with a very different looking kind of rock. It's much lighter and this is called coke. So you burn wood down, you get lump charcoal. You burn coal down, you get coke. And that is neither a soft drink nor a party enhancement item. Coke is the stuff that you're really after in your forge. Because what happens if you've seen the process for lighting a coal forge, you build the fire in the middle and you bring the fuel in from the sides. If you've ever seen a blacksmith do this, you'll see this big plume of smoke, but it will die down after a minute. What's happening is the green coal, the unburned coal, is moving in and is creating coke. This is the stuff that gives you a lot of heat and not a lot of smoke. It's a very concentrated heat. So again, a perfect fuel for using in your forge, but it's going to create a lot of smoke. Now, one thing I will say against the advantage, disadvantages, advantages between charcoal and coal. Uh, I love using coal because coal is very light. It doesn't clog up your airports. Uh, and also when you're done with it, you can cook over it. It's charcoal and it's good stuff. Uh, you can't do that with coal. You don't want to. There's a lot of nasty stuff in here. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't personally. I know guys that do. But again, I know a lot of people that would slam their wiener in the sliding glass door. So the other great advantage over coal and the biggest thing or, or over charcoal that coal has and this is why i would push most of you to go with coal is because heat is measured in btus now pound for pound charcoal and coal pretty much do the same job but the problem is is that a pound of coal is about this big and a pound of charcoal of the same btus is going to be about this big so pound for pound, they're the same output, but the volume is the question. Whereas if you're at a hard day at the forge, uh, you can burn through a maybe, if you're really going a five gallon bucket of coal, you will consume 10 to 15 buckets of lump charcoal. This stuff burns up very, very fast. I love it, but you better have a lot of it. And if you go down to Lowe's and think that you're gonna buy this in the bag uh, at six bucks a pop and, uh, and come away with any money, you are sorely, sorely mistaken. So this is awesome stuff. When I came down to this shop, when I was much more broke than I uh, am now, 
Uh, I did not have access to coal. Uh, coal is very difficult to get around here. But what we did have is a lot of pine trees. And so I would actually, using a thousand gallon uh, old fuel drum that I had modified, I would actually make charcoal in this drum, big drums at the time. And it's what ran my forge. But again, it would take me a good two days to make a complete burn, which that process is fascinating and I'll have to get into that later. But because I did it on almost an industrial scale, it worked for me. Very few of you out there are going to be able to produce charcoal in enough quantity for it to be reasonable to use. Now, of course, you can go down to Lowe's in a pinch and get a bag, but you're going to burn it up real quick. The other thing that I want to mention is that if you are in a suburban environment or you have to worry about neighbors or you're in a very dry place, if you're burning charcoal, charcoal is going to produce a lot of sparks and cinders and they're going to travel. Uh, one of the reasons that I don't use charcoal when I go do my demonstrations at my big shows is because those sparks get into the crowd and it's, you set somebody on fire, you have to put a kid out with a pitchfork, it's not a pretty scene. However, if you use coal, you will not have those cinders at all. You're going to deal with a lot more smoke. It's not going to smell as nice, uh, but you won't set any children on fire and get your contract, unfortunately, canceled. So, guys, that is going to be your solid fuel education for this evening. Of course, uh, if you found something useful in this blithering, blathering thing that I just put out there, uh, do a brother a favor, hit that subscribe button. If you have questions, please leave them under the video, and uh, you can always reach me at the website. I watch those comments, and I try to get to everybody's questions. But, guys, thank you again so much for watching, and I'll see you later.